The city of Bath is England's second most popular visitor destination after London. Bath is a town of supreme harmony, constructed mostly during the 18th century with beautiful cream-colored limestone in the Georgian style of architecture. Along with the urban beauty, there are numerous historic sites and many quiet lanes containing hundreds of little shops that produces an awesome combination that'll keep you happy for several days. The town center has a human scale with low-rise buildings and quiet streets lined with shops and galleries ideal for strolling, all contained in a relatively small area, only about 1,000 meters in one direction and 500 meters in the other. A nice place to start walking is the small Abbey Green, a peaceful courtyard with a large tree in the middle and historic old buildings all around. This courtyard is quite central. It's just one block over from the Bath Abbey, and yet it's easily missed because it's really not very conspicuous. The adjacent lane of North Parade has some great little restaurants, including Sally Lunn in the oldest building in town, Typical of our walking tours, we like to take you out of the way along with bringing you to the main highlights. It's very easy to navigate when you're walking around in Bath because there's one main street. It's about a kilometer long. It changes names a few times, variously called Milsom, Union, Stall, and Southgate streets. And it has different characters. You go from one end to the other. But throughout, this one street is a fascinating and fun place to walk. You are guaranteed to see quite a few street performers as you walk along in the lanes of Bath. There are jugglers, there's clowns, musicians, there's bubble blowers, and all sorts of activities to keep you entertained. And if you are amused, they will accept your tips. The southern end of this main pedestrian street is an excellent example of urban redevelopment. It's Southgate Street, which is kind of like a shopping mall in the middle of the historic center. It blends in very nicely with the pedestrian lanes around it and anchored by department stores and a nice variety of clothing stores and eateries in a very well-organized and clean place. The street itself was actually purchased by the private developers who have transformed it into a new town center. It's marvelous how the Southgate Mall blends seamlessly into its extension further north on Stahl Street and into Union Street, which is really the busiest part of town filled with locals and tourists alike. Most of the other streets surrounding this main lane are also fascinating to walk along. The best strategy for the savvy traveler is stroll up one direction and then back down another street, crisscrossing the side streets in a semi-organized way until all the possibilities are covered. Perhaps you will be drawn into Bath Street, lured by the colonies on both sides and tempting shops along the way. Bath Street is only one block long, ending at a small curved intersection called Cross Bath, lined with more columns. Take a look through the archway to the tranquil courtyard of St. John's Hospital and then look up to see the rooftop pool of the Therme Spa where you can get a full treatment in naturally heated, mineral-rich waters. Walk a block over through St. Michael's Place to Westgate Street, another attractive lane with more shops on both sides. It's called Cheap Street on the east end, but this side seems more for locals than for tourists. This leads to Kingsmead Square, another local gathering place nicknamed Seven Dials due to the converging streets around it. Recently renovated with wide sidewalks, outdoor cafes, and bike lanes. It's a very popular place to hang out and a great example of urban preservation and reuse. Located only three blocks from the tourist center, but most visitors never get here. A block north brings you to Theatre Royale, the main venue for plays and live musicals in town. They usually have something going on most evenings, ranging from comedies to concerts to drama. The theatre has its own restaurant, and in the side lane, Garrick's Head Pub, another cozy neighborhood with quiet streets and more restaurants. Then turn around and walk back towards where you started in the center by the Abbey, 
into a lovely tangle of small pedestrian alleys lined with shops. Between High and Union Streets, there are several little pedestrian malls with more shops, including the Corridor, Northumberland Place, and Union Passage. You could easily miss them, but they're worth looking for. Too often in life, we stay on the main road when the real treats are just nearby on those side alleys. One could spend several fun hours shopping and exploring these small lanes that wind through the commercial heart of town. These little malls are easy to find so close to the Abbey, but their entrances are sometimes inconspicuous. The Guildhall was built in 1776 as a town hall, and it's still used today as council chambers and for special events like weddings and concerts. Adjacent, you'll find the Guild Hall Market, an old covered arcade with 25 small shops and food stalls open from 9 to 5.30 every day except Sunday. The market has some craftspeople, such as for knitting supplies and for having a custom leather belt cut. What's the price range of an uh, average belt? They go from 30 up to about 45, uh -huh. depending on how wide they are really. Really? Yeah. And how long does it take to cut one and fit it? Well, if it's already made, it's a five minute job to cut it. Guildhall Market is the oldest shopping venue in Bath. It's been in action for the last 800 years at the same location. One block over, continuing on Bridge Street, you arrive at Pulteney Bridge across the River Avon, but you'd never realize it's a bridge because it's completely lined with shops that block any view of the river down below. It's one of only three major bridges in Europe covered in shops, along with the Ponte Vecchio in Florence and the Rialto in Venice. The River Avon flows through the center of town, creating a delightful watery ambiance with parks along both sides and boat rides on offer. Also along the river, you'll find a rugby stadium, which can hold nearly 14,000 people. And then during the summer, when the rugby season's over, they remove some of the stands and it becomes a cricket pitch and an open recreation ground for the people of Bach, used for hockey, croquet, football, volleyball, lacrosse, tennis, and drama. However, a conflict has developed because the rugby club wants to expand the stadium and many in the public want to expand the park grounds. At the next block on Northgate Street, you'll come across a modern shopping complex, the Podium, a small multi-level indoor mall. New Bond Street will tempt you until it intersects with Old Bond Street, another short pedestrian mall. This is the very center of Bath's shopping district with main roads, little alleys, and small indoor malls providing lots of temptation. So take your time wandering about in a major shopping break. It really helps when they remove cars and convert streets to pedestrian areas. More traditional scenarios of traffic and wide sidewalks lined with shops also works well, such as here along Milsom Street with historic architecture retaining character from previous centuries. For many years, Milsom was the main shopping venue in Bath, but in recent decades, the development along Southgate, further south along Union Street, has really shifted the center of gravity and balanced things out nicely so that they're all doing very well. Quick views of Milsom from our bus tour that we'll show you more of in a later movie. At the top, you come to George Street with raised paving that elevated patrons above the mud and horse splatter of past centuries. It's another fine shopping and cafe venue. We're very close to the city center, just 500 meters from Bath Abbey, so it's very easy to reach. And around the corner is Gay Street that leads you to one of the main highlights of town, the circus. This circle of 33 elegant townhouses is an ideal example of town planning with beautifully designed buildings that efficiently use the land yet also provide open green space for the residents with private yards in the back and a circular park in the middle. The circus was designed way back in 1750 by John Wood the Elder and completed by his son. It's just two short blocks further to the Royal Crescent, one of Bath's most famous sites. The Royal Crescent is the crowning achievement of this city and has become the symbol of Bath. 
for a pleasant route back towards the town center that will get you off the city streets for a while, enter the leafy gravel walk and stroll through Royal Victoria Park, which then becomes the Georgian Garden, lushly landscape with many flower beds and towering trees. Perhaps like yourself, this old doggy was feeling tired and just didn't want to get up and walk. You'll exit through the garden gates at Queen's Parade, which is connected to Queen Square. This green park occupies one block in the heart of town, surrounded by elegant homes and a fine hotel, the Francis, part of the luxurious Sofitel M Gallery collection. The park and obelisk in the center date back to the early 18th century, as do the buildings along the north side designed by John Wood the Elder. Stroll a few blocks over and you'll reach the Assembly Rooms, a prime social gathering place for the 18th century music and dance gatherings of high society. That completes the main highlights of a BOP walking tour and from here you can just stroll back towards the city center, soon arriving at the intersection of John, Wood, Quiet, and Queen Streets. There is a famous vegetarian restaurant here, the Acorn Vegetarian Kitchen. It's been around over 20 years and they're fully booked every weekend dinner. So you have to either reserve or come at lunchtime featuring local fresh ingredients and excellent service. You've got a pine nut risotto with a bit of pepper and lemon on the top and then you've got wild garlic and pepper sprouting broccoli. Brilliant. So you've got the Y Valley asparagus with hazelnut gnocchi and Sauvignon sauce. Thank you very much. Then you've got the confit onions and carrots. You've got two different styles of carrots there. So you've got the purple and the orange. And that's with poi lentils and an onion cider cream. And then you've got the smoke field mushrooms with walnut and mushroom pate, salt baked celeriac and the potato galette. And then you've got the calabrese broccoli with the almond and spelt grain emulsion and the confit jersey rolls, which is the potatoes. You've got a sweet onion and garlic dal with a cauliflower heart on top and then some pickled cauliflower around, risotto on the side and some puree alongside. Of course, you don't have to be a vegetarian to appreciate a delicious meal like this. Too often, vegetables are just a neglected side dish, but here they come to front and center. Um, a chocolate tart with peanut butter sorbet. We left feeling very happy and satisfied. Thank you. If you have any questions or comments about Bath, type it in down below and I'll be happy to answer and respond. All travel suggestions, questions, and comments are very welcome. This video was photographed on a recent trip with many more episodes coming to our YouTube channel. We upload a new travel movie every week, so if you want to be informed, please subscribe. We have more movies about Bath on our YouTube channel, where you'll also find more than a thousand other travel movies, mostly about Europe, but also Asia, South America, and North America. Have a look. And you can also find the movies listed on our website, tourvideos.com. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we upload new movies every week so you'll be notified. Thanks for watching.